Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we are going across the sea with Jerry and Vanny Clay to Cambodia. Jerry's a lawyer, Vanny is a teacher. They live and work in Honolulu, but they've decided to take their personal aloha to Cambodia to translate their aloha into Khmer, the language of Cambodia. They're sponsoring a school in a small rural village in northeastern Cambodia, and I've asked them to come and talk about it, to share their journey across the sea with us. Well, welcome, Jerry, Vanny. Nice to see you both. Thank you for being here and telling us about your school in okay. Cambodia. But, but first of all, I want you to tell me a little bit about yourselves. Okay. Okay, Vanny, what, what, you know, where were you born? Where did you grow up? How did you get to Hawaii? And then we'll, get, we'll go to Jerry after okay, that. Okay, sure. Well, first, I'd like to thank you for having us today on your show. Um, my name is Vanny, Vanny Clay, as you said. I was born in Cambodia. Uh, grew up there until the age of 17, uh, and then I left my country to go to further my education in France, in oh. Europe. Okay. And I, where I completed my bachelor degree and my uh, master degree. And then in 19, I believe, 83, I came to visit my older sister in Hawaii. I like it so much. <laughs> and then I moved to Hawaii. Okay. And I started to teach at Punahou in 1984. So this is my 36 years teaching at Punahou. And what do you teach? I teach French to the junior school students. French language. And, yes. the, and the French is what you studied in France, oh, I, oh, I guess. Well, uh, I knew French when I was, uh, uh, when I entered kindergarten and through the whole um, education because Cambodia used to be, um, you know, under the uh, French protectorate. Although when I was born, Cambodia already received uh, independence, but heavily we were under the French uh, administration, French language. So all school, uh, the school I went to, were, they were, we were taught uh, in French. All subjects were taught in French. So basically French is my language. I think an interesting little aside is when she came to Hawaii, she got interviewed by someone in the French language. Oh, yeah. For your, so for my, your job at, at Punahou? Yeah, oh, sure. Wow. Sure, yeah. Oh, so they... It was Mr. They, Rambler. Yeah, oh, who oh, yes, me. yes. And yes, then... I you know, know Mr. Rambler. Huh? Yes. Yeah, because so. I was a graduate of, of Punahou also. Oh. Uh, but, Jerry, what's your background? All American I, I, boy. I, I know you're a lawyer. I am. Okay. Okay, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, wow. They'll follow the Browns <laughs> and the Indians. Uh, went to law school in Ann Arbor, practiced in Detroit for six years, came oh. to Hawaii in 1974, uh, met this young lady, July 28, 1991. We got married. Uh, we went to visit Cambodia for the first time in 2002. Mm -hmm. And that's where the whole thing started. Okay, now, before we get there, so uh, you folks have your careers here mm -hmm. in Hawaii. Right? That's our home. This, yes. is your, this is your hometown now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You both came from different places. Mm -hmm. okay. How did you get back to Cambodia? How did that start? And, and well, then what is the school, what, what is your school in okay. Cambodia? Tell us about that. Well, let, let me begin by saying that in 2002, uh, Jerry would like to see my home country. So we took a trip to Cambodia, and well, I have not lived there for so many years. I left when I was a child. So um, we were around Angkor Wat, and we met a lot of children, you know, uh, selling trinkets and little souvenirs here and there. And so I, I just said, but it's Monday, it's Tuesday, Wednesday, and they go to school. <laughs> And the answer was that at that time, there were no school in the rural area. So we, we kind of, wow, I can't believe that these kids don't go to school, just stay running around in the field selling trinkets. 
So, so and, I'm sorry. You, so you, I mean, you've come from Hawaii. Yes. Where everybody's in school. Yeah, I'm all school. Yeah, everybody could go to school. And you go, go back to, to your place of your birth. And not, not everybody goes to school. And that's kind of a, that just, it's not right. So then we. So let me take this yeah. over. Mm -hmm. One Sunday morning, I'm reading the AARP magazine. And they have an art, uh, a series of articles. What are you doing in your retirement? And they talk about a guy who set up a charity to build schools in Cambodia. Uh, was this before you went to Cambodia or after? This that is was after. after. I see, we I came see. home. We wanted to do something. And you're thinking. And we're thinking. And we, we couldn't, we didn't know how to out begin, the, where to begin. Out of the blue, I'm reading about a guy who set up a, a ch an American charity to donate money to build schools in Cambodia. Who was this? His name was Bernie. Fisher. He had formerly been the bureau chief for Newsweek magazine starting in the 60s, and being a journalist, he got to know lots and lots of movers and shakers, including King Sihanouk of Cambodia. And um, it's a very sad story about how Cambodia got under the uh, communists, and many people died. and. Uh, Sihanouk, King Sihanouk spent the wartime in China, and after the communists were defeated, Sihanouk came back to try to resurrect a government for the people of, of Cambodia, and he called Bernie Krischer, his old friend, to help. Okay, and so... Can I just add a little bit on that? Of course, so, my dear. Now we went back to the article he read, and then he told me that, Vanny, read it, this, uh, this guy building school, and I said, I don't believe at all, because anybody can write anything he or she wants. So, and at the end of the article, there was one line, his email address. So I emailed him right after I finished the article. And two minutes later, the, uh, I said, you, the article claimed that you build a lot of school, and I would like to see some of your school, if that's true. And he said, sure. The email replied, you can come and visit some of my school at your own expense. And then in December 2004, 2004 mm -hmm. we went back, and one of his uh, employees in Cambodia took us around to four schools mm -hmm. unannounced. That he talks to the school uh, director, the teachers, and the kids, and says, "It's for real." We were convinced that this is not this is not fake. This is true. This is real. We signed a check. We left in December 2004. We went back in December 2005 to dedicate the school, to open, officially open the school. And okay, that's I, how I, it started. I want to put up a map of okay. Cambodia. Sure. And is it, tell us a little bit about this location of Cambodia and your school. Okay. So as you can see, Cambodia is surrounded by three countries. We have Thailand, Laos, and then Vietnam. And also, the capital city of Cambodia is called Phnom Penh. And our school is in the uh, eastern part of Cambodia, near the border of uh, <clears throat> the border with Vietnam. And the school is in the province called Ratanakiri, and in a tiny little village called Chiang Ra. Okay. And how did you decide on that village or that place? How did you how did you get there? What happened was, we were assigned this as an area that badly needed a school, and we said, if they badly need a school, we're here to help. And so, who was signed that this was the organization? Uh, the, the, the organization, oh, which was called, at that time, American Assistance for Cambodia, which is a 501c3 American charity. So okay. they, they told us, like, there are a lot of needs in that area. We would hope that you consider, and we say, sure. I mean, I'm from the capital city. What would I do in the jungle, right? She had never been so there. I never been even there. So it's like out of my. It's like why? And I realize that if they, there's a need, then we should do it. And yeah. And so, how, I mean, you, you're from Non Pen. Yes, that, capital and, city, city and, girl. And how long would it take you to go up to uh, Chiang Ra? Okay, so um, in 2005, 2006, and 2007. Uh, we were lucky. They have a commercial, little small plane, Russian small plane, and it would take us about an hour to get there. And then the plane crashed, 
So there was no more commercial plane to go there. So we had to take a four-wheel drive, and it took about 12 hours in the old day, but now uh, roads most have been the, improved. Most of the roads are now paved. So they weren't back then. Eight, eight hours to nine hours. Now. Nowadays. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what were the kids like? You, you went there and you met some of them, and uh, uh, well, how, how, how did you get up there? Or what, when so, was, what okay, was your trip? So for all our trip. So we would leave the capital city, arrive in the, uh, the nearest city called Ban Long, and we stay there at night. And in the morning, we would take our four-wheel drive to go to school. That takes us about, nowadays, 30 minutes. In the old day, about an hour, depending on the road and the man monsoon season, uh, you know. But it's about 30 minutes. So when we get there, the kids come, and we, we let them know way ahead of time what day we will arrive. And the kids come and greet us, and, and then we start our, you know, They all chatting. wear their uniforms. Yes. You can see blue skirt and pants and white top. Uh, about every four or five years, we give everybody new uniforms. Uh, we also yearly give them a uh, packet of school supplies. Um, right now, you can see a picture. There are over 420 kids in our school. Wow. It grew from 250 in 2005 to 400 and, um, 450, roughly. And um, we also give them, not, not we, I mean the school director um, make an ID card for each kid because it's just too many kids. And is that what they on Yes, right. that's what they show us. The, and it has like their name. Their uh, date of birth, uh, their home address, the parents' name, and then a signature and a stamp from the school director. Those are cute kids. Yeah, they are. Aren't they they are. are. They are delighted. And yes. when you go and meet with them, I mean, do they understand your relationship or what? Yeah, they know who we are. <laughs> and they really know my wife very well. <laughs> uh, amongst all the Cambodian people, I'm known as. Mr. Vanny Clay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, here, here is one slide that's kind of interesting. Uh, Jerry, that's you. Uh, and, and what are you doing? What, I'm in, in front of the English class. Ah, I see. Okay. So and, you're teaching them English. Ah, okay. Okay, and I'm teaching them English by uh, trying to sing a song called Twinkle, Twinkle, <laughs> Little Star. Okay. And... Uh, I didn't know any of the words after the second verse, and I was surprised that that evening the English teacher uh, was able to go to a place where he had a hotspot and get on the internet and download all the words, and then he put all the words on the board, and so the second day now we're going to we're teaching them all the work. So you're actually like being a teacher. I'm having fun. Oh, okay. no, I, I, Jerry I, always like to be a teacher. <laughs> and and do the kids? I mean, do they do they understand what, English? Do they understand the words, or is this this process of learning? Is okay, that... let me explain to you that they all learn Khmer, which is a Khmer. Cambodian language. That's... Everybody in the whole country. Okay. And um, we hire an English teacher to teach them basic English. So they were able to say their name, where they, they live, their village. They uh, have a brother, they have a, a sister. Yes, a very, very, you know, short conversation. Uh, I don't think they know all the meanings of each word, but uh, at least they were going along with the rhyme, with the, the, the song that Gary taught and, them. You know, communication is so much more than just the words. And so you begin to find ways that you really connect with the ideas. Connect with people. Yeah. Just learning a little bit about it. And even this song may come up. You never know. 
Did, did, by the way, did you sing this song to them, or were of you course. just? Of course. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. That's Mr. Good. We all okay. had to do this together. I see. Okay. Karaoke, Cambodian style. Right. <laughs> no. Okay. Do, and do do they speak French too? Or? Zero French. Uh, all, that is something. Okay, that's my generation. Uh, we see. we knew French. Because of the Not anymore. Influence. Yes. I yes. See. Not anymore. It's all either Khmer or a little bit of English. Yes. Okay. We're, we're going to take a one-minute break and come okay. back, and I would like to go through the photos one more time sure. and uh, have a little more talk about each one as we go through. Sure. So right now we're going to take a break, and we'll be back. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Aloha. I'm Melly James, host of Let's Mana Up, Tuesdays, every other Tuesday, from 11 to 11.30. This show is meant to dive into stories of local product entrepreneurs and how they're growing their companies from right here in Hawaii. I'm so thrilled to have our show kicked off. And so please join us on Tuesdays at 11 o'clock as we talk to local entrepreneurs and hear their stories. Aloha, I'm Keisha King, host of At The Crossroads, where we have conversations that are real and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Aloha. We are back with Jerry and Vanny Clay, and we are talking about their school in Cambodia. And I'd like to, Jerry and Vanny, I'd like to kind of go through the photos one more time. We, we, we went quickly through sure. some of them. And uh, tell me a little bit about each one as we go through. So let's start with uh, the first photo uh, after this one. Is, is, that, is that your school? Mm -hmm. and what, what about this? What, what does this tell us? Is this is, is um, we have had to uh, hire a contractor because in the rainy season the place just kind of uh, floods out. So we have terraced the front of the school. This is the main school building, four classrooms. Uh, we have since then. Uh, in honor of one of our other friends, he donated money to build a classroom, and we have built a library. And um, on that last last image, yeah. no, there was no library in that image. Oh, just, no, you don't see it. But just, there's a title. What is what is that in the blue? Oh, HSI, uh, work hard. You know, uh, it good for you. Education, basically, just tell the kids. I you see. Know. Okay, let's take a look at the next photo. The right. next photo is children in a classroom, and I would like to say that the class size is big. It's about 30 kids per 30, sometimes 35, which is unfortunate, but, you know, that's all we can do. How does that and, compare with America? Oh, uh, well, schools? in some private school, you have smaller class, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, but they learn how to read. They learn how to write. Well, what are they studying here? They study, uh, I believe it's uh, a textbook on the history of, uh, of, uh, it's an article, and they they learn to read, and then they write, and they talk okay. to their teacher. So uh, they seem to be engaged, and uh, there's there's no behavior problem, and that's something I it's amazing. And th th these are all kids from the country, rural areas. Uh, yes, all rural. They're, they're, okay, let's it's go. Not not city kids. City uh, kids don't come to our jungle. No. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's take a look at the next photo, and, and and here's the one with the ID cards. Yes. The three little boys. Yes. Yeah, and and they all got this, which is I guess a big advance for for them compared to what their life was prior right. to you sponsoring oh, yeah. the school. Otherwise, they just sit and watch the the cows pass by, farm all day long, helping their their, their family. So they they are lucky in one way, and we are very lucky to have a chance Mark, to help them. Mark, if I could just give maybe a two minute overview yeah. of the history. When the communists, the Khmer Rouge, took over, they deliberately destroyed all the schools. They didn't want anybody to have any education except the party people. They killed roughly um, a million people out of a total Closer population. To. I'm sorry? Closer, two million. To, Closer to, two million. to two million people out of a population 
of about 7 million. And so this country had to come really from scratch and rebuild. And uh, because they destroyed all the schools in these rural areas, you have to have somebody uh, sponsor building a school. And then the idea of the charity was, could we continue to be involved and help the kids get better and better education? Okay, let's take a look at the next photo. All right, and here you're handing them, is this supplies? A is school that supply that has notebooks, a pens, pencil, an eraser, a sharpener, and a ruler. So let me give you a little background about that photo. Yeah. Uh, you can see that our school supplies, uh, our school provide education to three ethnic groups. One is the Khmer people, the, the, the Cambodian people. One is the Tumpun, uh, which is the uh, ethnic background of, ethnic group of that area. And one is the Cham people, and the Cham people, they practice uh, Islam. So regardless of your, your ethnic background, your social economic background, we don't care. What we care is we give you an education. So and everybody they, they all get along. They all get along very well, and which is very... Maybe we could learn something. I would hope so, yes. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at the next, the next photo. All right, and here, here you're, you're both, uh, I guess they're celebrating their supplies. Is that right? Yes, yes, yes. And some year they celebrate their new, new clothing, new uniform. I see. Yes. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Are your, no, okay, and, and, there's the story of uh, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. That we talked about earlier. That right? we talked about earlier yeah. and, uh, and, and having fun. Okay, next photo. Oh, ah. Danny, what, what is this? Okay, let me explain to you. Uh, this is a photo of all the staff, teachers and staff. On the left-hand side, you see the, uh, the man, the, the chief of the village, the one who donate the land to us to I build see. a school. And then you have uh, seven teachers. One is the English teacher in the back. And then the school director also, he, he played the role of the teacher as well. He's really in the background, and the rest are all teachers. And we have a lady taking care of, uh, you know, the janitor help us with, actually two people help to um, take care of the school. And you can see there were two young teachers, one next to Jerry and one next to me. They both were students in that school. Wow. in our school and they came back and start to teach and that is that is really it makes us so it's happy a, you, you, gosh that's amazing yes yeah. you, you must have been just yeah we were just so pleased wow yes. wow that is really cool that is really nice the uh, teacher on the far right is you can see a uh young person practicing islam and uh the islamic a community that feeds into the school is very, very supportive of the school. Okay, and and you folks, what what, what do you provide? Money, supplies, uniforms, um, the whole. Okay, so what we do is every year we have a certain budget that we dedicate to help the kids in that school. We we give them school supply, a textbook, um, a sport equipment, uh, maintenance of the school, um, anything to do with the school, the government will not help us. However, the government helped us by paying six teachers. Okay. So six. the government is involved. It's involved. But just for the teachers. Just for the teachers. You the rest, provide the facility. Everything else. Yes. I see. And yes. for the kids. And now Including you the... uh, building two small houses for the teachers to live okay. on the school campus. And, and, and how many grades does this go? Uh, from first grade to sixth grade. And when they finish sixth grade, that's it. Most of them uh, go back to farm in their village. And a few will continue. And starting from 2019, 2020, we came up with the idea of uh, opening a program called Scholarship for Children who are, you know, very good and who would like to continue to the nearest city. And yeah. we start that this coming year. And so that would be 7th, 8th? 7 all it, the way to 12th grade. Is it the grade. same type of grades uh, we have here? Uh, yes, much. yes. From 7th grade all the way to 12th grade, we will support them. Uh, for six years so that they can finish the, the entire high school. And then, obviously, the, the ones that 
came back as teachers, they, they already did. They did, they show us, on, like, yes. And so. they, now, did they have to go to college or? They had to go to the college. It's uh, a teacher in, program. I think it's like 18 or 24 months. Yeah, well, they finished the high school, then they continue, I believe, in the capital city to be trained as a teacher. And then they decide what they want to do in life. Some of them remain in the city, in the capital city. Some of them uh, go to wherever they want and then only a few that come back to the rural area. So there is a little bit of a mixed blessing here, right? Because some of them, they will leave yes. their, their home, and that's because of their education, yes. really, isn't it? Yes. I mean, they, were, they got a big advantage yes, from actually. the education, and so they may have to leave their family in order to pursue their, their dreams, their dream, if yeah. you will. Yeah. And we've met a number of our students who have gone on uh, to, the capital city. to the capital city and building a life there. How does yes. it make you feel? Terrific. It feels good. And just, you know, as long as we are able to help uh, give them a chance, why not do it? And as you know, education is the future for the children of any country. Now, let's take a look. This next photo here, they, they got computers. Yeah, we donate the computers. Ah, I see. But now, go ahead. If I might. Uh, the school, being so rural, has no infrastructure. So there's no electricity, no running water, no sewer. So we donated the money to purchase two solar panels, which power two computers for about four to five hours a day. And the students take turns on the two computers, learning basic <laughs> programs, uh, computer skills. Something I mean, that they would never have ever, ever had before. Ever. Absolutely. And they don't or have even now. I mean, they wouldn't right. have it, but for the school. Yes. Right. And and let's take a look at the the last couple photos here. Um, that's I guess that's all, all the students out in front of the school. Uh, they are still uh, on the side. I think it didn't show on the photo. But uh, that's over four hundred students. Yeah. Wow. Well, there, and there you are. Right. Uh, that yeah. was just back in June. Okay. Now. Let me ask you, we're about at the end here of our, of our talk. If somebody else wants to be involved in this program or to help in Cambodia, I mean, I understand you came from Cambodia and you feel a connection there. And then Jerry went there and, and read an article in the, in the paper. I mean, how does that happen? But anyway, <laughs> what can they do? How can they, if they want to, help out what should they do the easiest thing is to contact us okay how and would they do that easiest email, email or uh telephone um uh, our email we didn't we just set it, up, it to you but uh, what, what is your email address g v for vanny gerald and vanny play c-l-a-y at, at, at gmail.com okay and so if somebody feels that they would like to participate and help out and, and anytime, join you. Anytime they can email us. Okay. And we're all kind of one, aren't we? I mean, you're, you're helping these people, but maybe they will help us later on. <laughs> Certainly with an explanation of how to live together, huh? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's actually some of those photos are quite remarkable. So... Jerry, Vanny, thank you very much. And thank you. Uh, thank Mark, you. Thank you very much. Enjoyed hearing about your uh, school in Cambodia. And aloha, everybody. We are done for today. We have left Cambodia and that beautiful uh, shrine. What, what shrine is that? It's a temple, Angkor Wat. Angkor Wat Temple. Yes. Okay. All right. Aloha, everybody.